Now let us see the internal structure of heart. Hmm? Now we started with the upper two chambers. I told you this is the left atrium and this is the right atria, right? When compared to the ventricles at the bottom, the ventricles, they are thick chambers, but when you see the atria, the atria are thin chambers. So atria and ventricles you compare, atria are thin chamber, whereas ventricles are thin chambered, thick chambered. Both the atria are separated by a septum, interatrial septum. Both the atria are separated by a septum called interatrial septum. The right atrium is larger when compared to the left atrium. Both the atria are collecting chambers. Now the right atrium, it collects deoxygenated blood. The left atrium, it collects oxygenated blood. Right atrium, it collects blood deoxygenated blood is collected by two major blood vessels. This is the pre-cable vein, also called superior vena cava. One at the top, which is opening into the right atrium, is the pre-cable vein, also called superior vena cava. So this brings blood from the head, neck, thorax and forelimbs. So it's brought into the right atrium. Now this is the post cable vein. The post cable vein also called as inferior vena cava. Now this blood vessel is bringing blood from abdomen and from lower limbs. So this is opening into the right atrium. So pre cable vein brings blood from some parts and post cable vein will bring blood from the remaining parts. Now the opening of pre cable is not guarded by any valve. It's the opening of the post cable, it is guarded by a valve. The valve is called as eustachian valve. The opening of the post cable vein is guarded by a valve, it is called as eustachian valve. Now this valve is rudimentary in case of adults. It is functional only in the embryonic stage. That's because there is an opening here. There is a, a oval opening. There is a oval opening in between the left and right atria in embryonic stages. This opening is called foramen ovale. Foramina means opening, oval means oval opening, oval means it is oval in shape. So there is an opening here which facilitates the movement of blood from right atrium to left atrium in embryonic stages. You know the passage of blood flow, passage of blood flow, the blood from right atrium goes to right ventricle, <coughs> from right ventricle it goes to the lungs deoxygenated blood and again it is oxygenated and it is coming to the left atrium and it is then going to left ventricle and then pump it pumps blood to all parts of the body to the tissues and then the deoxygenated blood the deoxygenated blood will be now coming into right atrium so th this is the passage of blood flow but see, the lungs are not working in embryonic stages. So these are not working. So there is no necessity for this chamber to work. So the blood is bypassed and it is going from the right atrium, it is directly going into the left atrium. So this is not working, this is not working. 
That's because the mother is breathing for herself and for the baby. So the oxygenated, I mean the deoxygenated blood which is coming to the right atrium will directly through the foramen ovale enters into left atrium in embryonic stages. The blood being directed from the right to the left, it is because of the eustachian wall. But in adult stages, the lungs are working, the right ventricle is working. As such, the foramen ovale is closed, so it is closed. And this wall becomes rudimentary as such. The foramen ovale is now represented as a small patch, it is called fossa ovalis. It is no longer foramen ovale. It is simply a depression now, it is called for valis. In some people, the foramen ovale is not completely fused. It is called patent foramen ovale. Patent foramen ovale. So that is a diseased condition, where the blood from the right side and the left side, they mix with each other. So that is called patent foramen ovale. When the blood is mixed, it is the mixed blood which is formed from the left side. So that results in blue babies, where blood is having less of oxygen and more of carbon dioxide. Now, there is another opening which is coming and opening into the right atrium. This opening is the opening of the coronary sinus. Coronary sinus. Opening of coronary sinus. Coronary sinus. Coronary sinus is a blood vessel which is 3 centimeters in length. It is formed by fusion of 6 arteries, 6 veins, I mean 6 veins. Coronary sinus. The blood from the wall of the heart, I mean the myocardium, is brought, is brought and all these veins, they combinedly form a coronary sinus. The coronary sinus is opening here and it is guarded by a valve. The valve is called as Thebesius valve. It is called Thebesius valve. This is functional in adults. So this is present towards the left side. So it's present very close to the interatrial septum. And on the left side, if you see in the left atrium, left atrium I told you is receiving oxygenated blood. Now, when I say oxygenated blood, it is coming from the lungs. So we have a pair of blood vessels. We will have two blood vessels on each side. These blood vessels are called pulmonary veins. There are two pulmonary veins on the left side, two on the right side. All the four are opening into the left atrium. They are not guarded by any walls and they are bringing oxygenated blood to the left atrium. When I take the lungs, I take the right lung and the left lung. The right lung is made up of three loops. The left lung is made up of only two loops. Now from each lobe, I am having one pulmonary vein is coming. Though in diagram I said only two pairs. Actually three on the right and two on the left. But the first two are fused with each other on the right side. So this both become one. So two on the right, two on the left. But it also so happens that in a population, in some cases both of these might fuse with each other. Or in some cases, these two are separate with each other. So in a population, it can vary from 3 to 5. But general condition is, two pairs of pulmonary veins are present. And these are not guarded by any walls. They are bringing oxygenated blood to the left atrium. Now left Left, left atrium, left ventricle, right atrium, right ventricle. These are separated by septa. This septum on the left side, 
left atrium left ventricle or separated by left atrio ventricular septum atrio ventricular septum this is the right atrio ventricular septum and this septa they are guarded by walls on the left side we have got a bicuspid wall this wall is called bicuspid wall on the right side right atrium right ventricle right atrio ventricular septum and right ventricular atria right atrio ventricular aperture so that is guarded by tricuspid wall so on the left side we have bicuspid wall and the right side we have tricuspid wall bicuspid wall also called mitral wall now both these walls if i see the structure of the walls they have a fibrous ring they have a fibrous ring and they have cusps elevations are called cusps elevation is called cusp and when ele elevation is not smooth it is irregular it is irregular like that hmm? so it should be directed in the opposite direction actually so it should be like this but there is a fibrous ring hmm? so right side there is tricuspid wall left side it is called bicuspid wall because only two cusps are present it is also called mitral wall it is called mitral wall because so that wall resembles the meter of bishop so that's why it's called mitral wall now we are coming to the ventricles the lower chambers are called as ventricles the left ventricle the right ventricle both the ventricles are separated by a septum the septum is called as interventricular septum this is the left ventricle that is the right ventricle right ventricle is less thick the left ventricle is more thick there is a difference of 1 is to 3 the wall of the left ventricle is 3 times more thicker when compared to the right ventricle that's because the right ventricle is pumping blood to lungs left ventricle pumps blood to all parts of the body since left ventricle is pumping blood to all parts of the body it is more muscular when compared to the right ventricle because right ventricle is pumping blood only to the lungs lungs are present close by right then if you observe the inner walls of the ventricles if you observe the walls of the ventricles the walls of the ventricles they have got ridges the ridges are called they are called columnae corniae also called trabeculae corniae columnae corniae trabeculae corniae also called meaty ridges they are also called meaty ridges so they are present throughout the wall of the ventricles you can see such ridges throughout the wall of the ventricles now some of the ridges are larger in size they are called papillary muscles papillary muscles you will see three papillary muscles on the right side and two papillary muscles on the left side papilla now if this is the surface elevation an elevation from the surface is called papilla so these muscles resemble papilla so they are called papillary muscles now in between the tricuspid wall in between the tricuspid wall and papillary muscles there are connections 
both on the left side as well as right side. The connections are called as chordae tendinae. They are called chordae tendinae. They are also called tendinous cords. They are also called heart strings. Chordae tendinae, tendinous cords or heart strings. Now these are collagenous, they are mostly made up of collagenous fibers. 80 percent is collagenous, 20 percent is elastin fibers. They are tendon like structures, we are aware of tendon like structures. Tendon is a, a dense regular connective tissue present between a bone and a muscle. So these are tendon like structures which connects the papillary muscles with the tricuspid wall on the right side and papillary muscles with the bicuspid wall on the left side. They are mostly containing collagenous fibers. And the function of these chordae tendine is it is not allowing the tricuspid and bicuspid walls to open too much into atria at the time of when, when the walls are open. So that is at the time when atria contract the walls are open. So these are not allowed to open too much into atria, that is the function of that. And now the blood, the deoxygenated blood from the right side, from the right atrium will come to right ventricle, when this valve is open, tricuspid valve is open, the deoxygenated blood will finally come into the right ventricle. Likewise oxygenated blood from the left atrium will come into left ventricle, it will come here. And to carry that blood outside, we have got two major blood vessels. Now starting from here, from the right ventricle, we have one blood vessel here. So this blood vessel, this is called pulmonary arch. So this is the right ventricle. Originating from right ventricle, there is pulmonary arch which will take that deoxygenated blood to lungs. After going outside, it will divide into two and it will carry the blood to the lungs. At the base, you will find three semilunar walls. We have got three semilunar walls. Likewise, originating from the left ventricle, there is another blood vessel here. This is called the systemic arch to take the oxygenated blood there is a systemic arch. It is called systemic arch, it is called aortic arch, both same. And at the base we have three semilunar walls. So these two are semilunar walls. I can name this wall as pulmonary wall and this wall is aortic wall. Both are semilunar. Semilunar means it is half moon shaped walls. And in between these two, there is a, a small ligament. It is called ligamentum arteriosum. Ligamentum arteriosum. In between the systemic arch and pulmonary arch, there is a small ligament. So this is called ligamentum arteriosum. It is remnant of embryonic ductus botali. Ductus botali is also called ductus arteriosus. It is present between systemic and pulmonary arches in some of the vertebrates, early vertebrates. So even in human embryo also, that blood vessel is still there, but in adult it becomes rudimentary, it is not functional, it became a ligament and that ligament is called ligamentum arteriosus.